If you're looking to create better looking websites, then stay with me because today we're going to recreate a beautiful and modern full screen navigation with the sole power of Elementor Pro. Hello, I'm your host Casino. I'm a digital alchemist. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the beautiful and professional full screen navigation of a site of the day nominee on the awards website. And as mentioned in the intro, we'll do this with Elementor Pro only. In the previous video, I covered a similar topic, but I was using Astro Pro, Elementor Pro and Elementor Extras. So none of that today, since we're only going to use Elementor Pro and you'll be able to follow no matter which WordPress theme that you're using. Now you will find an affiliate link to Elementor Pro in the description of this video. Needless to say that I only recommend Elementor Pro because I absolutely love it and I use it each and every day. To be crystal clear, I do get a commission if you purchase Elementor Pro through my link, but you don't pay anything extra, so you don't have to, but if you do, thank you. All right, enough talk, let's dive in. Okay, so first let's take a look at what we're going to build today. So just like in the previous video, I went to Google and typed best navigation websites and I landed on the awards website where they have a showcase of uh, some of the best navigations of either um, uh, award winners or side of the day nominees. So I scrolled down and uh, in the previous video, I covered this website here, but today we're going to look at this navigation here. So this is the website. And as you can see, it uses a video background. Now, uh, today we'll really focus on the navigation that you can see here in the top right corner. So if I scroll, uh, there's no sticky header, but the navigation stays just like in the previous uh, tutorial. But this one is a little bit different. And as I mentioned today, we're only going to use Elementor Pro. So if I take a look, I open, uh, there's a nice animation. Now we're not necessarily going to recreate all of that, but I just want to show you uh, how to create um, this behavior with Elementor Pro. So if we look at the mobile version, uh, the mobile, mobile version stops here at roughly 60% of the height of the screen. Um, I'll do something a little bit different because um, I want to use it a full screen with the video, but um, it's pretty easy to do in Elementor if you want to uh, exactly mimic this website. And once again, this series is not about uh, merely um, stealing and copying uh, other people's work, but this is about teaching you how to create pretty much anything with Elementor Pro and also give you inspiration. So let's take a look at what I built with this. So this is the website. As you can see, it's a video about Costa Rica. Now let me refresh so we get the initial image. So that's what you see. First you have an image and then it loads the, it loads the video. You can scroll and as you can see, the uh, navigation stays here on top. And if I click on the menu, I have a nice animation um, sliding down. And when I close, it slides back up. Now let's take a look at the tablet version. So this is a tablet version. So once again, you can scroll and you can still see the navigation on top here. And you also get the same nice animation and we're gonna check the same thing with the mobile version. So once again, you can scroll and a nice animation for the full screen nav. Now to achieve that, as mentioned, we're going to use Elementor Pro. Now you could probably get away and try to replicate it with free add-ons or free plugins, but today I'm really going to focus on how to do it with Elementor Pro. Now, if you're using Elementor and didn't get the Pro version yet, you may be wondering, yeah, what's the big deal with the Elementor Pro? Well, first of all, uh, the pricing isn't that much. It's, if you have one website, it's gonna be 49 bucks a, a year. And if your website is making you money, that's a no-brainer. And even if it's just a website that's not necessarily uh, bringing back money, but you really want to have a nice website, maybe for a personal project, what's 49 bucks a year? Come on. Now, of course, I can imagine that in some countries, $49 may be a lot of money. And in that case, I always give that advice. Try to make some money first. And then when you make your money back, come and get Elementor. 
Pro. Uh, $99 for three sites per year and uh, $199 for 8,000 websites. And basically what this does compared to the free version of Elementor is you get additional widgets, you get about 50 advanced widgets, um, you get the theme builder features and that's, to me, that's the most important thing. Uh, you also get the pop-up builder and we're going to use that today. You get the visual form builder as well as uh, popular marketing integrations, which is really handy if you're doing digital marketing. And last but not least, you also get the WooCommerce Builder, dynamic content and custom fields capabilities, as well as motion effects like parallax and mouse effects. So to me, it's really worth it. Okay, let's move on to what we're going to build. So this is what we're going to start from. So I'm using the Astra theme, but you can use pretty much anything because this is going to go away in a few moments. And I've already prepared uh, the, the home page, but there's no uh, video background and no image yet. And we'll take care of that in a moment. So let's go into the WordPress dashboard. And the first thing you want to do is go to appearance menus and you want to create a menu. Now I've already created a menu with the home page, and the rest are fake links. So um, it doesn't really matter what you put in the menu, just make sure you have a few items, five minimum in the in the menu. Tick the primary menu, give it a name, and then save your menu. Okay, so now the next thing you want to do, you want to go to templates, pop-ups. And here we're going to create our first pop-up. So make sure you select pop-up in the drop-down, and we're going to call it um, full screen menu. So let's click on create template. Okay, so you can either choose a template, but we're not going to choose that. So let's just close this window. And that's it, we're in the pop-up settings. So the first thing you wanna do is change the width to 100 uh, VW. Then uh, for the height, you wanna select custom, select VH and put a 100 VH. Okay, so it's full screen. The content position should be at the center, position uh, horizontal and vertical center, the overlay, we don't need any overlay, so I'm just gonna close that. The entrance animation should be the sliding down, and the exit animation should be the uh, slide out up. That's the one. And actually, uh, the animation duration should be 0 0.4, so it's way faster. Okay, general settings, um, nothing here. So let's move on to the style tab. Okay, so first you wanna select a background type. We're going to select the classic. And as a color, we're going to select black. Okay, next we wanna uh, choose a color for our, our close button. So I'm just going to select a uh, red. So it's gonna be BC. BC000. And by the way, I'm just going to show you how you can um, put this color in the default color. So click here on the top left navicon, click in on the color picker, and then we're going to change this color here and paste uh, our main color, which is BC0000. Click on apply, and now you'll be able to use it on um, all pages in Elementor. Okay, so let's go back to our pop-up settings. And for that, I click on the, the little gear icon in the uh, bottom left corner. Okay, so we're back. Back into style, close button. So we already chose the color. And for the size, let's choose 35. So it's bigger, as you can see here. So um, let's publish our work. So it's saved. So we're going to add a condition. We want to show this on the entire website. And then we're not going to touch the triggers and the advanced rules. Okay, usually I do that at the end, but a good habit is to save your work frequently, even though there are some automatic saves. So, but I always prefer doing that. Okay. So now we're back in the pop-up settings. The next thing we want to do is to uh, add a widget. So I click here on the icon for the widget library and I'm going to type nav menu. So 
here is my nav menu so by default it will select the only menu you can find uh, which is the main menu if you had several menus then uh, this is where you you would need to choose the menu you want to show here so we want to change the layout to vertical we want to align it in the center the pointer we don't want any pointer so i'm just going to select none next we want to change the uh, alignment of the mobile drop down to the center we'll take care of that later but uh, let's set it right now the toggle button we don't want any okay so now let's move on to the style tab so uh, we have two uh, drop downs here main menu and drop down so for the desktop version we're going to um, play with the main menu options so first of all uh, on in the normal state the text color should be white okay and we're going to change the typography so click on the typography icon and as a font we're going to select Montserrat font let's give it a uh, 40 pixels a size of 40 pixels we want to transform it to uppercase and we want to give it a letter spacing of two okay and we also want to give it a vertical padding of uh, 30. okay next the hover state so click on hover the text color should be our our red color or you can choose pretty much any color you want but for the sake of this tutorial this is the color we are going to use so when you hover over it you can see which one you're hovering over and for the active we're going to select the same red color okay so once again let's save our work good now let's move on to the tablet version so i'm just going to select tablet here in the bottom left bottom left corner of the window and for uh, the tablet and mobile version, we're going to play with the drop down settings. So once again, we're going to um, change the color. So for the background color, make sure you reduce the opacity of whatever color is in there because we don't want anything um, behind. For the text color, we're going to select white. Now for the hover state, uh, once again we want to drag the opacity down for the background and the text color should be red now you may be saying um, why would you need hover features on a tablet or on a mobile because it's touch right well it is but if you're using a uh, smartphone like the uh, samsung note then you have a stylus so with the stylus you can actually hover over elements and the same goes for the ipad ipad pro or other tablets where you can use uh, styluses okay so that being said let's move on to the active tab once again we're going to reduce the opacity of the background and select our uh, theme accent color okay next uh, we're going to play with the typography so once again it's going to be the Montserrat google font size should be 30 pixels and uh, we want to transform it to uppercase okay and i forgot the letter spacing should be two also okay and we want to give it a vertical padding of 20. okay now let's move on to the mobile version so let's switch to mobile uh, make sure you're on the normal tab and for that we're going to change the typography so it's still Montserrat but uh, let's make sure yeah it's 30 for the rest we still have a uh, letter spacing of 2 and we are actually going to change the vertical padding to 20 okay so let's click on update and we're pretty much set for our navigation okay so now the next step is to go back to the wordpress dashboard then go to templates theme builder and as you can see i've already uh, created a footer and if we go back to the front end this is our footer right here at the bottom okay so now let's go back into uh, the theme builder okay so click on add new select header and as you may have guessed we're going to call it header 
So click on create template. And once again, we can either choose a template or create a new one. We're going to create a new one so you can close that. And we're going to create a new section. The new section should be uh, three columns. Okay, so first uh, make sure you click on the uh, icon to change the options of the section. And first of all, we're going to make it full width. Okay, the heights, we're going to select a minimum height of 65 pixels. And we're going to the advanced tab, give it a zero margin and a zero padding. Okay. Now let's move on to the first column. So click on the first column, go to advanced and same thing, give it a margin of zero and padding of zero. And what, once you've done that, I'm just going to right click on the column, copy the column and then uh, hover over the second column and I'm going to right click and choose the paste style option. And why do I do that? Just because I'm lazy and I don't want to retype um, the zero margin and the zero padding. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the third column. And there you go. Okay, next, uh, make sure you select the main section, uh, go to the advanced tab, and we're going to give it a Z index of 100. And actually we do that because we want the header to always be on top of whatever else is um, under that Z index on the page. And you make more sense uh, later. Okay, so uh, once we've done that, we're going to change the proportion here of the columns, the width of the column. So click on the first column, go to the first tab, which is the layout tab, and we're going to give it a 10% width. Next, for the second column, we're going to give it a 80% width and the rest is for the third column. So once you've done that, uh, go to the widgets library and we're going to add an image. So I'm just going to, actually I'm going to use the site logo because uh, I'm using Astra, but uh, if you're using a different theme, you can just drag an image and add your logo. Now on most websites, uh, on, on most themes, sorry, um, they should be compatible with Elementor. So I'm just going to drag the site logo here. Okay. And as you can see right out of the bat, it's exactly where I want it. So that's great. Okay. Next, uh, we're not going to, um, put anything in that middle column. Actually, I could have only two columns and play with the margins and the padding, but I found it easier to do it that way. Okay, so next in the third column, I want to add an icon. And for that, I'm going to go to the widgets library, type icon, and actually I'm going to select the icon box. So I'm just going to drag the icon box right here. And uh, first I'm going to change the title to the word menu. I'm going to remove the description and I'm going to change the icon. So I'm just going to type lines and I'm going to use the grip lines icon. So click on insert. Okay. Next, I want to select the icon position. So the icon uh, should be on the right hand side. So I'm just going to click on right and there you go. Fine. Next, click on style. And um, as the primary color, we're going to use white, but before we do that, because if we do that now, you're not going to see anything. So let's move on to the third tab, the advanced tab, background. The background tab should be classic and we're going to select black as the background. Okay, once you've done that, click on, uh, on the style tab and as a primary color, we're going to choose white. The spacing should be zero or just void at this point. The size should be 28 pixels. And for the hover state as a um, primary color, we're going to select F2, F2, F2. So when you hover over it, it's really subtle. You won't really see it here because uh, it's really small, but it will work out. 
So um, back to the icon. So that's fine. And next for the content, we want to align in the center and vertical align in the middle. And for the typography, we're going to use once again, Montserrat with a size of 14 pixels, uppercase, and the letter spacing should be one this time. Okay. Next, um, yeah, forgot to change the, the color for the title. So I'm just going to change it to white. There you go. Okay, and the last step, we move back to the advanced tab, give it a zero margin, and we're going to give it, so 20 pixels top, right bottom, and we wanna change the left. So we're going to click on the, um, the, the um, chain icon to unlink the values and just give it a 10 pixels on the left. Okay, so let's publish that to save our work. So as a condition, we want to add this on the entire website. So I'm just going to save and close. And I don't know if you can see because it might be small on your screen, but there's a little gap here. And this seems to be a bug because if I go back to the section, I have zero margin, zero padding. Uh, so there should be no gap. So if I move on back to the third column, I also have zero margin, zero padding. So uh, this seems to be a bug and there's an easy fix. So I'm just going to duplicate the third column. Then I'm going to remove um, that one here. Okay, and then I'm just going to play with the, uh, with the width of the column. So this one is 10%. Second column should be around 80% or even 81%. It really depends. You, uh, you really need to play with it. And there you go. The problem is fixed. So just click on update. So next, what you want to do is make sure that that icon and the menu here stays uh, sticky. So for that, make sure you select the icon box, go to advanced, then go to motion effects and for sticky, select top. So we can't really test it right now, but we'll test it in a moment. Okay. Just make sure you do that. Okay. So it's looking fine on the desktop. Now let's move on to the tablet mode. So let's go into the tablet mode and we're going to change the, the proportions. So the first column should be 25%. And if you can't select the, the, the columns, you can also select in the navigator. So the second column should be 59%. And our third column, well, should be 16%. Okay, so let's update to save our work and let's refresh the page back into the tablet mode. And as you can see, it's working fine. So before we save and refresh the page, it actually looked like it was cut, but it's not. So uh, a good rule of thumb is uh, when you see some weird things happening, just save and refresh the page. Now let's move on to the mobile mode. So mobile mode. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's having a different behavior. And when you're in mobile mode, there's apparently, unless I've missed it, no way you can actually uh, remove the, um, the menu label. You can do it, but if you do it, you do for each version. So if you remove it and you go back in tablet mode, it's gone. You go back in desktop mode, it's gone. And we don't want that. So let's put our menu label back. So and there's no option to actually just uh, remove the, the label here in the in the options. So the only way to do that is with CSS. But don't panic, it's really easy. And actually, I'm going to put the code on the companion blog post. So all you have to do is click on the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else. If you're already on my website, just look at the uh, companion blog post and just copy and paste the code as I'm going to show you. So before we uh, copy and paste the code, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the icon box selected, go to the advanced tab, and we're going to give it an ID. And that ID is going to be my dash Navicon. Just make sure you write it, you spell it like that. Okay, next we want to click on the little gear icon at the bottom uh, left corner of the window. 
Uh, and we do that to go into the settings. So once we are in the header settings, go to advanced custom CSS, and I'm just going to paste the code. And once again, you can find that code uh, on the companion blog post. Okay. And as you can see, the word label, um, uh, the, um, the menu label has disappeared. So once again, all you have to do is copy and paste. Now I've copied it here. Uh, you could also copy it somewhere else. For example, I use the Astra theme and there's a spot where I can paste all the additional CSS code so that it's neat, it's uh, easier to maintain. So it's really up to you. Uh, maybe you use a plugin. I don't know what you're using, but either you can uh, paste it here in Elementor Pro or somewhere else on your website. So once you've done that, make sure you click on update. Okay, next, before we move further, make sure you select our section, uh, go to the layout tab. And for the, the height for the mobile version, we want a minimum height of 55 pixels. Okay, next for the columns, the first column should be uh, 45% of the window. Uh, the second column should be 40%. And the third column should be 15%. Okay. Next, uh, we want to select our, our icon box and we want to go to the advanced tab. So we're going to change the, the padding value. So first I'm going to unlink the value and I'm going to put 13 pixels top, um, nine pixels, right? Four pixels at the bottom and nine pixels on the left hand side now you can't see anything right now and it's normal so let's just go back to the style tab uh, for the icon we want to use a spacing of seven make sure our primary color is uh, white and once again you see that bug where we don't see anything here so i'm just going to click on update refresh our page and go back into mobile mode. And as you can see, uh, it's looking perfectly right. And the same thing happened a few minutes ago. So uh, you might have to play with this because it's not really in the, in the center here. So let me click back on the icon box. Let me go back to the padding. And here you have to play really with the, with the values. So, So let me use 16, 9, 1, and 9. It looks a little bit better. Okay, and if I look at the preview, yeah. Looks better like that in my opinion. Okay, so there's one last thing we need to do here. So let's go back into our desktop mode. It's a bit easier to uh, see. Okay, so make sure you select the icon box. Go to the content tab. And here where it says link, you can see uh, dynamic here, click on dynamic, then select pop-up. And then once you've selected pop-up, click on the little wrench icon. And we're going to look for our pop-up, which was full screen menu. And now we can click on update. And now when you click, there you go. Here's the navigation. So let's go into preview mode. And that's working perfectly fine. Great. So we have one last step for this tutorial. And for that, we need to go into the WordPress dashboard pages. Uh, make sure you create uh, one page. Uh, I've called it home. And then click on edit with Elementor. Okay, so I've already um, prepared that page. So there's only um, a title. So if you're wondering, this is the um, animated headline with the style rotating, animation is slide down, and I've put three words in here. And then for the style, I'm using, um, let me see, I'm using uh, the Montserrat font at 100 pixels. Okay, and here I'm using a uh, divider and that divider has a width of 250 pixels and the style is white, the weight is 6 and the gap is 15. And I've just duplicated that uh, divider and placed it here just below the animated headline. 
Okay, so first of all, you want to select the section, go into the style tab, and we're going to select our uh, background image fallback. So click on the icon and then select your image. I've already added an, Im uh, an image, but if, you, uh, if you're just following along, you can just drag and drop an image in here. So click on insert media. So this is the image that people are going to see uh, before the video loads. So if there's an if they have an issue and the video can't load, they will see that image. And even if they have no issue, they will first see the image while the video is loading. Okay, next you wanna go into the background type. Make sure you select uh, the, the background video, which, which should already be the case and just uh, put in a link. And if you're curious, this is not one of my videos. I just went onto uh, YouTube, I typed 4K, and one of the first videos that came up was Costa Rica in 4K. So very, very beautiful video, and I'm just using it for the demo purposes. Okay, so here I've pasted the video, but of course I do recommend you use your own videos uh, if, you use this, if you're using this for production. And I've already selected the start time, uh, which start at uh, 104 seconds, which is one minute and 44 seconds. And you could also select an end time, which I'm not going to do here. So let's just save our work to be sure. So that's already looking much, much better, but we still have an issue. Uh, we still have that uh, white space here that we do not want. We want the logo and the menu to uh, be over uh, just like in a trans transparent header. Okay, so for that, select the section here, go to the layout tab, make sure you've selected a minimum height of 100 VH. You could even trick, uh, because you can really go further here, uh, more than 100, but you could type 105, so you make sure that it actually goes uh, below the default. But right now, I'm just gonna keep it at 100 VH. 100 VH for the moment. Then move on to the advanced um, tab and make sure you unlink the, the margin values, type 100. Actually, no, I'm going to type 77. And then I'm just going to put a minus in front of the 77. And then you can play with your keyboard and change the value to see um, up to where you have to go. So um, if you recall the, um, the height of the header, let's go back here, was 65 pixels. So I've tried with 65 pixels, but when I do for some reason, there's still a little bit of gap. So I'm just going to play with the values. And actually here I have to stop at 71, minus 71 works out. For me, you might have to play with the values a little bit. So just click on update. Okay, and now let's go back and let's refresh our page. Okay, it's looking good, but we still have that little value. So a uh, little um, uh, white space here. So let's go back and actually I'm just going to move it to 77. Okay, so let me refresh. And it's looking great. So let me try that. Okay, so once you've done that, make sure that it looks good on the tablet also. I've already made the changes to the, the title and here on the, on the mobile also. Once you're happy with it, you can just get out of this window. Okay, so now let's go back uh, to the front end and let's try our tablet version. As you can see, we can scroll, we can still see the menu here. And if I click, I have the beautiful navigation sliding down and sliding back up. And I can actually test the mobile version. So I'm just going to refresh. Okay. Once again, I can scroll and I still have my sticky navigation here. And if I click, beautiful, beautiful nav. Okay. So once again, let's go back to the desktop version and the same behavior. We can scroll and you can still see the menu and the Navicon. And once you click on it, you have this beautiful, beautiful animation.
So as you can see, it's a pretty simple tutorial, but it's really, really powerful. Actually, I can see uh, a lot of projects where I could use that because I kind of see it as a trend. You know, before it used to be, um, there was nothing. Uh, once you scroll the website, you have to go all the way back up to get the navigation. Then uh, we have the sticky headers. But I think with the sticky headers, it's fun when you're on a 27 inch um, screen or even a 21. But when you are on a 13 inch screen, which is really popular with the MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros and stuff, um, it's a lot of real estate actually to keep a sticky header in my opinion. So uh, I like the fact to declutter the, the header and actually be able to scroll, always see uh, the, the menu here, and okay, I don't see the logo here. Some people may want to have the logo, which I can understand for branding purposes, but you could pretty much achieve the same thing, just like I've shown you. Instead of um, placing the stickiness here on the, um, on the icon box, you could place the stickiness option on the whole section, and then you, you would have the, um, the logo here. I mean, there are different ways to achieve it, but I really find it beautiful. It makes it really minimal. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love minimalism. And I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. Now, if you're interested in purchasing Elementor Pro, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, you will find an affiliate link in the description of this video. So I hope that this tutorial has shown you how to create a beautiful and modern full screen navigation for your current or for your next WordPress website. Now, if there are other WordPress or Elementor tutorials that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. And by the way, you find the companion blog post on my website, casino.com. And of course, the direct link is in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it as it really helps growing this channel. I can't stress this enough. And if you know someone that could benefit from it, please share it now. If you're not yet a subscriber and that would mean the world to me, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, if you want to brand market and grow your business in the digital age, then make sure you subscribe to my email newsletter so that you never miss a share of digital alchemy, as well as tips, tools, services, and case studies that can help you grow your business online. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you around. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.